Hello and welcome back to the LIGO India podcast, Listening to the Cosmos. I'm the host and creator, Devarati, Associate Professor at the Inter-University Center for Astronomy and Astrophysics in Pune in India. I'm also the chairperson of LIGO India Outreach. Today we have in our virtual studio, Professor Sanjeev Purandar, who is Emeritus Professor at Ayuka. He is a well-known figure in the world of gravitational wave astrophysics. So a warm welcome to you, Sanjeev, Thank on you. our podcast today. It's a pleasure to have you with us. Thank you very much, uh, Yeah. So do you want to tell us something about your uh, academic journey? Yeah, so uh, yeah, I had a sort of, uh, a sort of a cricket path in a way. Okay, I mean, uh, yeah, the thing was, uh, as it happened, I uh, went away from physics. I mean, yeah, in my college, I went to mathematics. Okay, in the thing. So I did, uh, I did mathematics for BSc, uh, as a bachelor, mathematics for MSc. My master's also is in mathematics, but it was applied mathematics. I remember. Where I came across uh, general theory of relativity. Mm-hmm. actually in applied mathematics and uh, then uh, in fact Dadich was my teacher at that time and he actually incited or uh, he is the one who uh, I interest out in general relativity in fact quite a bit and then uh, from there then I applied to TIFR and uh, there I changed to physics so uh, that was quite a bit of a, quite a bit of a change because the way mathematicians think and the way physicists think is different. Yes. Although it might be similar things you talk about, but the questions asked by mathematicians and the questions asked by physicists, they are sort of different. So they're quite different. So I had to think, I had to change my thinking there in this uh, when I went to physics, and then I joined TIFR, and whereas. Uh, started working with uh, Nardlikar, Jan Nardlikar, on uh, general relativity black holes, basically. Right. And that also was a sort of uh, out of the way thing at the time, tachyons and uh, black holes. Okay. So that was my PhD thesis. And in uh, how tachyons affect the thermodynamics of black holes. Because, uh, you know, things fall into the black hole, but they don't come out classically, I mean, that is. But tachyons come out. Tachyons go in and come out because they are they travel faster than light. So they're outside the light pole. Okay. So they are not bound by the usual laws of uh, ordinary matter, where uh, it has to be, you know, falling. The world line has to be inside the light cone or on the light pole for the photon. These are outside, so they come out. So then, what happens if you have tachyons uh, coming out of the black holes? Uh, will the area decrease or what is the it is the entropy thing and so on. And this kind of thing was suggested actually uh, by Professor Sudarshan, ECG Sudarshan. Okay. And uh, he thought that this would be a good thing to uh, investigate. He was my examiner, by the way. And Vishweshwara also was the second other examiner. <laughs> and so that's why I, I went on to these things. But uh, the point was that I got views from both six. I mean, I have a mathematical uh, viewpoint where I learned uh, really rigorous mathematics. And then also I have a physics uh, thing where I learned in the PhD time. And more so when I joined the Pune University. So later on after doing PhD, I went to Raman Institute for some time. Then I came back to Pune for personal reasons. And uh, then I joined the Pune University Physics Department. And there I learned a lot of things, actually, in physics department. I think that also played a big role in my whole uh, outlook and so on. Because all the physics which I had missed when I was doing mathematics, okay, I learned it all, all the basic physics, okay, the founding physics, which are the foundational thing. I learned by actually going to the physics department. And there also I came to know the importance of experiments. Okay, so I was mostly a mathematical theoretical physicist when I joined the department. But there, there was a big emphasis on uh, experiments. And uh, I realized that really that experiments were very important for physics. 
Otherwise, I mean, it, you can't just hang it like that without any, just on a theoretical basis. So that was uh, one of the big things which I, so several things happened actually because of the physics department. First, I learned how to teach also. I didn't know how to teach. So that, that was one of the things. But most important things were this experimental outlook as well as the foundational things which I learned in physics which I had missed because I went through mathematics. But then I had both, both mathematics as well as the physics part. So now, so I was equipped with both these tools to exactly to do gravitational wave data analysis when I got into gravitational waves. And actually something like 10 years later, I got into uh, 10 years or maybe seven, eight years later that I got into gravitational waves. I think, uh, I don't know what turned me towards it. I mean, what I was, uh, uh, what uh, this is what I was, I was, me. Huh? Yeah, this is what I was going to ask you. That what uh, was it that motivated you finally towards gravitational wave data? Yeah, so the thing was, it was very interesting. I mean, the one thing also when I was in physics department, I started working because of the GMRT came at the same time. This was 86, 87, okay. The giant meter radio telescope is here. And I, a couple of years I worked with Swaru, okay, on the antenna, the radio antenna thing, so solving these problems. And uh, then I went into gravitational waves, uh, thing when I heard lectures and all that, I said, here is general relativity and here is another antenna. Okay. <laughs> so it was a mixture of engineering, physics, and mathematics. All these three things came together in gravitational waves. Right. And uh, this broad thing and interdisciplinary nature of the subject, that is what actually excited me. And I thought that this was the right thing because many things, even in my college days, I wanted to actually go for engineering. I mean, and so on. So uh, I had sat for the exams like the COEP here in Pune. IIT also had sort of helped my student, uh, my friends and so on towards it. So, uh, <clears throat> but things happened and I remained in pure science. And uh, so, uh, I mean, that was also influence of some people. I mean, my father's uncle, for example, he said, no, no, you have to do pure science, he told me. <laughs> <laughs> my father's uncle, so on the thing, Bal Chandra Durandar, he was a great, I mean, he was a guardian, I mean, he fought in the, uh, you know, for the independence with Gandhi, freedom fighter, so at that time. And uh, he, uh, he actually influenced also me. So I know that you started working on gravitational waves at Ayuka already yes. in the early 1980s, 1990s. And at that time, people were not even convinced that it could be detected, right? Yeah. So yeah. You were the among the first who, uh, along with Satya Prakash, set up this small group of students and postdocs here. Yes. Uh, your first research group, right? And then... Yeah develop these techniques which are even now being used like yes. techniques like match filtering so how did you come to uh, come to this so we started with uh, as i said with a school in karjes i mean there was a and i was fortunate enough to go there and uh, we had four people in that actually four indians and uh, one was bala myself i bala ayer uh, varun sahani and uh, there was one Sai Aya who, is, who was there in PRL for a while, but I don't know where he is now. So we were the four that time in the school. And uh, in that school, I met Bernard Schultz and also Kip Thorne, who uh, gave a talk on gravitational wave detectors. And people were jeering at him. <laughs> <laughs> because they didn't expect <laughs> Yeah, him. even in the school. <laughs> yeah, that uh, how can you build four kilometer long? Uh, laser interferometers. Wow. Uh, when you can't even, it, when it is difficult to build even a tabletop interferometer, which is one meter, which is so hard. Amazing. <laughs> so four you kilometers you? are you talking out of your mind, basically <laughs> that kind of thing. But that interested me actually, that lecture. Then Abhay Ashtekar, I believe, gave a lecture also in the maths department on this gravitational wave detectors. Actually, something about gravitational waves and all that. So maybe these two were there, 
But then I got talking to Bernard Schutz, who was a lecturer in that school. And uh, he said, you are doing all these things on radio antennas. These antennas are much simpler, I think he said. <laughs> what do you have to do here? Uh, maybe you can come and join this and all that. So I started working with Bernard Schutz, actually. I went, I, he got me a one-year fellowship. And uh, I joined him there in 87, 88. And uh, that's where I started working on these things. And that's where I found the stationary phase approximation. I so, see. which is still being used. Mm -hmm. It is uh, 30 years on from 87. And uh, it is still being, it is, uh, I mean, it is the mainstay of gravitational wave physics. I didn't know at the time that this was the, this would happen. And stationary phase and all these things I had actually learned from, basically from uh, uh, lensing. I was doing a lensing problem, gravitational waves and so on. And also, I found it in radio astronomy, trying to get the waves together, coherence and so on, of the radio antenna. So uh, there, you have to have you, you must do stationary phase, <clears throat> and that also was a uh, thing because you know the stationary phase thing. Also, we had in in our college as a one of the methods taught to us, but I never believed in it. I mean, I thought, how can one point thing ever give you uh, the full full integral? I mean, something at a point or something like that. So that has to think. So I have to never, I, I, used, I used to ignore it actually in, in college. And then uh, when I went here, I mean, when I wanted to do this problem, I, I just ha had to do it. I mean. And then I found that while jogging actually on the Cardiff grounds, I, I thought that this is the way to do it. I mean, one was expand the function about the a stationary point and then do the integral and so on. I thought about it and then I did it. And then I said, if I can do it in two, three days, this must be done somewhere. <laughs> so then I went back and looked at the literature. And then I saw Born and Wolf in, uh, you know, this book on optics. And there it was, the stationary phase right on the first page. Or something like that. <laughs> Very interesting. Yeah, in fact, so, um, many of your students have later become uh, some of the pioneers of uh, the LIGO and LISA communities, right? So, yeah. uh, your students like at Ayuka, Sanjit Mitra, mm -hmm. Archana Pai, they are part of the LIGO India Scientific yeah, Collaborative. Yeah. Sukanta Bose was your postdoc, Professor yeah. P.S. Satya Prakash was also your postdoc, right? So, right. Uh, so you so, have basically uh, built this entire uh, gravitational wave community, which has finally yeah. even culminated in the uh, LIGO India project, right? right. So you have played one of the pioneering roles. In yeah, this that is my dream come true. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> so um, let me also mention here that uh, for this reason in 19, in sorry, in 2020, uh, you were elected as a fellow of the American Physical Society, right? And uh, yeah. in the certificate, they wrote for foundational contributions to the theoretical underpinnings of gravitational wave detection, especially in data analysis techniques and for developing a gravitational wave community in India, which has led to LIGO India. So at right. LIGO India, we are uh, extremely grateful to you for, for this reason, of course. And uh, so do you want to say something more about uh, the data analysis techniques? You also develop the match filtering technique and other, right. other techniques, right? So do you yes. want to say something yeah. about it? Yes. So one of the main thing which the match filtering actually rests on here is the stationary phase, the, the fact that you can right. calculate right. things. So stationary phase was the sort of the, what do you call it, rock or what is it, something like the uh, the main thing on yeah, which yeah. the whole thing rests with there, because there only you can calculate the cross correlation between yeah. the filter and the uh, data and so on, or the signal which may be there in the data. Okay, so the match filtering and all that actually is a standard technique in uh, in engineering and so on. So that that is there, and uh, <clears throat> this match filtering thing was a, not exactly my idea; it was actually Thorns. Idea. I mean, okay. he, may, he may have mentioned it in uh, uh, 300 years of gravitation, I believe. I'm not sure of this, but maybe it's there. But see, some of these ideas, I, I don't know from where they have come. But 
they might have come from me they have come, or they have come from tipton or shoot side or no actually or they are in that group also they are under crew like it's all a mixed thing like right, the you right. the terminology like chop mass mm -hmm. nobody knows from where it has come i think right but we were using that term in cardiff so where has it come from i mean so shoot says he he didn't say it. he didn't <laughs> <laughs> Nobody wants to take the Rolex says he doesn't. He also has that. Even I don't remember. <laughs> so it started with some discussions and uh, legs. Yeah, I don't know. Some of them also. Many things like that are right. there, mm -hmm. and then setting up the bank of templates and all that. So right. This is all there in Hellstorm, for example, mm -hmm. uh, the book which was uh, Rolex had brought this book I think into the for us to see this thing. and uh, so uh, match filtering technique was there but to actually do the whole thing uniformly space the templates and so on that business we had to do also you know the thresholds minimal match what is called the minimal match we didn't give any name satya prakash and me i just called it kappa inverse so <laughs> <laughs> so it, it was not given all those names but it was the whole procedure for the newtonian waveform how to filter out the newtonian waveform that was laid out in that thing but later on i think uh, thorn and his people showed i mean his group they showed that it start only the newtonian term the post newtonian terms are extremely important in the in spiral yes. otherwise you will not be able to detect it the phasing is very much dependent on that okay yes. I mean, so actually this this idea was there also in cardiff for, i mean i had this at the back of my mind but it just just remained at the back of my mind so i once or twice i mentioned it actually at the time but i thought all these people were experts on post newtonia rola and so on so they should know better than me so uh, i i did not uh, seriously think of it but then uh, i had actually thought that the post newtonian term should uh, i mean influence or they should change the phasing and that is what matters for match filtering right. so uh, so that was the thing so uh, i think should i mean keep on and let showed that but the main other idea which came from me and uh, so generally thing is that the differential geometry mm -hmm. uh, using differential geometry in uh, gravitational wave data analysis again differential geometry has been used in statistics so cr rao is actually the uh person i think right. who uh, did that i mean in 1945 who introduced a manifold for right. uh, the family of the probability distributions okay i think but introducing gravity differential geometric methods uh, into gravitational wave data analysis i think was our big contribution right. i think from our side i think and then everybody locked on to it i mean amazing whether it was thorn screw later on even in uh, continuous waves and all that all these things have been used okay. one idea still has not succeeded it is the hierarchical search we are we are still writing a papers on that <laughs> <laughs> then with sukan and uh, other people like who was that archana we did this uh, coherent search but that is also still not implemented on data this is too completely maybe that expensive or maybe because of the noise thorn gauss and noise maybe it's better to do uh, what do you call it, coincidence search so you can uh, get it off of non gaussian noise and things so that was there then every two years or so we came up with something new and uh, it was for the first time so the match filtering paper that was one or two then the gravitational i mean the geometrical methods in the this thing that is metric and all that on the space that's one thing the stationary phase but was even before the, the coherent search hierarchical search you know all these things plus uh, then something for lisa also you know i came up with for the indo french project right with the modules of cdgs getting the null space for the to cancel the laser phase, laser phase noise or laser frequency noise so that was a time delay interferometry this is already done by other people uh, tinto and armstrong and so on and uh, they had this method of doing this but the connection which 
I established, you can say, is the connection between this method and algebraic geometry or commutative algebra. Okay. That it, it went into a problem which was posed by Hilbert in 1890. Wow. <laughs> and then uh, with Sanjeev and all that, we did the stochastic search, anisotropic search. Right. We revived it actually. It was started earlier by Weiss, mm -hmm. Nelson Christensen. So they had done that. But then I think the whole uh, the focus shifted to isotropic background. That, that would be very strong. Right. So everybody integrated over the whole sky. So then this was lost. But then we revived this again <laughs> uh, because of the fact that if you have an isotropy and a small region in the sky, then uh, you can use a big part of the bandwidth of the detector. It's like the uncertainty principle. If you take the full sky, then your bandwidth goes down. Right. And then uh, you are restricted to below 100 hertz or 60 hertz. Or the same search, which was just called a cross correlation search, uh, Badri, myself, Badri Krishnan, uh, myself, and uh, Himon, who was there, my student, and uh, also uh, uh, John Whalen, we uh, we use the same uh, sort of idea for the continuous wave sources. And that cross correlation search now is the best, considered the most uh, promising, right. or the, has done the best among the, all the mock data challenges. Thank you so much for um, summarizing all your work in such yeah. simple words. Yeah. <laughs> So, um, I also want to ask you about uh, your recent article in Current Science, which actually I yeah. have on my table right now. So, yeah. I know that you have highlighted uh, particularly contributions from Indian scientists in general yeah. relativity and gravitational waves. So, yeah. do you want to say something more about it? Can yeah, so I only uh, covered, you can say, Vishweshwara and uh, Rai Choudhury. Right. I somehow thought that. Uh, uh, somehow or other, they, this work is not so well known. Right. And uh, so I thought that this should be brought, brought to the forefront. So and, you have uh, uh, highlighted the pioneering works as yeah. Um, yeah, to uh, Professor uh, Kasturi Rangan, in fact, uh, asked me, why don't you write such an article? Thank you so much for um, highlighting this. these works. These are very important for the younger generation to be aware of. Yeah. Um, I know that you have been given uh, many honors, uh, yeah. including the Meghna Chaha Memorial Gold Medal, uh, the Firodia Vigyan Bhushan. You yeah. also uh, shared Milner's yeah. Breakthrough Prize, yeah. shared with LIGO Scientific Collaboration. Right. So, um, other than your honors, I would also like to know a little bit more about your other passions. So, oh, I yeah, music has been my. Uh right from the, I think, uh, my childhood, right from uh, the beginning when I was uh, in school <coughs> and uh, not even school, maybe even before school, if I remember right. Oh. My father used to play the organ. Right? So it was there in the house and I used to also play it. Organ right from the age of seven or eight or something like that. And uh, many of these uh, singers and professional people, I mean, musicians, they used to come to our house. So even the organist, I mean, who used to the professional organist used to actually play with Balgandaro in the theater. They used to also come and they used to guide me also. So I learned a lot from that. And so my so my style is actually like theirs. Those old professionals who were there. Nice. Uh, Haribau Deshpande was my uh, star in a way. Yes. I remember you told me you have even played uh, in concerts in Pune, right? Ha! Ah, so I have played, but not very formal. Uh, like in Ayoga, of course, I have played. In uh, TIFR, also I have played on the accordion. Accordion has to play that time. And he even here in the Kharki station, I have played. <laughs> uh, <laughs> there used to be the Durga Puja. I thing. see. I and one of my classmates actually, he, he used to play the drums, bongos and so on. And uh, so we used to play all around. I mean, even the Pune University I played and so on. 
in the socials and things like that. Accordion again. And uh, my his name is Joseph Swaby, my schoolmate. <laughs> and just about uh, two months ago, we played now. Uh, we had our old school gathering just between when there was a dip in this COVID. <laughs> <I see. laughs> you know, February. So you yeah. think your interest in music has played a role in understanding frequencies and gravitational waves as well? Uh, I don't know that, but uh, yeah, but it is. Uh, there seems to be some connection somewhere, but I am not so sure what what it is. Because we also say listening to the universe, right? Like uh, gra gravitational waves are almost like uh, music. Yeah, right? it's in the same uh, same frequencies, right. audio frequencies, and all that. Do you want to play something for us? No, oh, just a jhalak. Sure. From the Raj Kapoor thing, just the first few yeah. seconds, you know, sure. a minute. surprise for our listeners. Oh. <laughs> Sanjay, yeah. do you have um, a message for the, the new generation of gravitational wave enthusiasts who look up to you as a pioneer? I think you have to find your own problems, own way to do things. Right. And never get bogged down by something else which is very, uh, uh, which has been done before. So, Never go down to, I mean, bow down to tradition or something like that. You must be, I think, uh, you have to think on your own, basically. Thank you so much yeah. for sharing these experiences with us. Yeah. Um, it was really great to have you on our podcast, Sanjeev. Um, yeah. Thanks to all the listeners also for being here with us, for listening to our podcast. Uh, yeah. We will have many such speakers in our upcoming episodes. So um, please stay connected with the LIGO India podcast, listening to the cosmos. Mm -hmm.